guys would know with the last couple of weeks with black black lives matter a lot has been going on uh in terms of bringing the black community giving us a lot more uh recognition that you know that, that we deserve in, in this country and beyond uh, as well as correcting a lot of the injustices and what you find with a lot of the injustices that we've faced and continue to face is that a lot of it's tied to money and what you find is that the more of us can uh, feel that we have a level of independence financially in our lives, the more we will be able to speak up about a lot of things and the more we'll be able to take the place at many tables. So we started Humble Penny to start to share a, a ton of information to really empower people, uh, more specifically to empower families, because we know, uh, with my wife, we know that if the family unit is at a place of uh, independence financially then the family unit can therefore change the game generationally which for me was a big thing because when i moved to the uk my parents who moved to the uk with me struggled a lot they really struggled to try and find their own place they struggled a lot to try and find uh, to have survival in this country so a big part of our core mission now is to try to empower families but to do to actually help them move along what we refer to as the money journey OK, um, which I hope to talk to you guys about on today's uh, on today's session. And the reason I wanted to talk about the money journey uh, is because a lot of us uh, day to day uh, kind of just live our lives without actually knowing that we are already on a money journey. So I wanted to talk about what the money journey is, what the money journey actually looks like, what the stages are in between the money journey and why I think it's critical that we understand where we are today financially in order for us to start to think to ourselves, well, how can we get to that next best place? So for a lot of you watching this, you have various goals. Your goals might be that one day you want to be financially independent. So I want to talk to you about what that actually means uh, in very simplistic terms. And then I'll connect that to what the money journey is about and start to talk to you about how we can start to take various steps to move ourselves forward, okay? So what on earth is the money journey? So everybody in this room is uh, at a place financially right now, but it's very important to understand where that place is. So what I typically say to people is that they should immediately work out what their financial net worth is. So um, the bit about my background I haven't spoken about is that for the last 10 years, um, I've been working in the industry of venture capital in the UK. So what that means is that I come across people who are high net worth and super high net worth, people who can write checks of 100K uh, to maybe a million or 5 million or 10 million pounds to make an investment. And the one thing I've noticed with a lot of those people is that the one metric that they are able to track consistently on their in their lives is they're, they're able to track every single quarter what their financial net worth is. OK, so to make this session really interactive, I know we don't have a lot of time and I know we've seen a, a church environment. I'd like to just tell everybody uh, to I'd spend two minutes just asking people to work out what their financial position is right now. OK, uh, because I think it will really help people um, to take away something tangible. So in very simplistic terms, your financial position which is the metric that every person who's got um, who's grown wealth over time tracks one metric is essentially the sum of all your assets which is uh, an asset to anything that puts money into your pocket over time uh, less the sum of all your liabilities over time so if you're sitting right now at home i presume you're all at home if you grabbed a notepad i'm, I'm hoping you've all got notepads with you you've got a, piece, uh, a sheet of a sheet of paper and a pen on that sheet of paper at the very top I'd, I'd love you if you can to just draw write the word assets at the top left hand corner and on the right hand side at the very top write the word liabilities and if we just spend literally a couple of minutes because i really think this is a really powerful exercise to do although we're going to do it quickly because of time i want us all to just sit down and just focus on uh, this particular exercise ask yourself right now what assets do i have in my life right now because this is going to help us connects to the whole idea of the money journey in a second so what assets do i have in my life right now what what do they look like so by assets i mean do you have any savings so how much is that so write the word savings and write the amount next to it do you have any uh investments in equities which are stocks and shares uh investments into companies if you do roughly how much do you have invested so if you write equities or stocks to the left you'd write the amount right next to it under the asset section 
of that sheet of paper. Do you own a property? So do you own a property that's bringing money into your life? It could be a buy-to-let property or a house with multiple occupancy or something that means that it has some, some uh, economic value, okay? Write down the property and write down what it's worth. Now, I will also say right on there what your house is worth, the house you live in right now, uh, because on the right hand side, you're also going to write the liability that you're owing on that house right now. OK, so you write the house. So you live in a three bed house. You just write house, you write the name of your road and literally write what you think a sensible valuation of your property is. Just write down that value, okay? Then how much cash have you got? So you might be cash in your current account, you might be cash sitting somewhere else. Uh, what is that? How much is that? Write down the amount. And also write down any other assets you have. By that I mean things that have some present and future value. It might be that you um, uh, have, uh, a life insurance, for example, I, I put that out there, and that life insurance potentially has guaranteed payout, yeah, because you've got life insurance that doesn't pay out, uh, but you have life insurance that guarantees to pay out. So you might want to write the value of that life insurance policy if it's guaranteed to pay out, okay? What we're really doing here, and I know this is a very quick exercise, is we're trying to establish essentially on a sheet of paper, because everybody in this group either comes either from somewhere in Africa, a lot of us from our background typically have no idea holistically, um, in very simplistic terms, where we are financially. So if you've written all those assets on the right hand side, please write down what your liabilities are. So what by that I mean, what are you owing people? Very, very uh, quick exercise. Do you have credit card bills? If you've got three credit cards, what do they roughly add up to? Do you owe 15k? You write 15k. If you have a mortgage, what does that mortgage have in terms of its liability that you owe to the bank? What is that number? Write it down. If you have student loans, write down what you think the rough number is, write it down. So what we really wanna do here is then say to ourselves, what's the sum of all our assets? What does that number look like? And what's the sum of all our liabilities, what we're owing people? What does that number look like? What I'm really trying to get you here is to then take your total assets and subtract your total liabilities. This is essentially the number. If you had to almost take a financial selfie of your life, this is the number that represents what you are worth right now. So outside of you know anything else, this is the number that if someone said, if anything happened to you today, your children, if they had to sell, and God forbid they had to sell all your things, but if they had to do it, the net position they'd end up in is this number, okay? Because they'll have to settle your liabilities, they'll have to pay back debt, all of, the, all of those things, and they'll have to then end up at a position. Now, I'd love to ask you if you can drop in the comments in this chat, okay? I'd love to just hear from you guys because I want this to be somewhat interactive, although I can't see a lot of you because you're, you're all, um, uh, the videos are not showing up, um, is, I would love to know from you, what was your reaction to doing this particular exercise? So first of all, did you know your numbers? So did you actually know what things were worth? So like your assets, did you have any idea like what you had in assets? And also if you didn't have any assets, why do you think you haven't got any assets? Okay, because it's a very important, this is a very, interesting conversation because what it's meant to do is it's meant to ask the next level question which is why is it we don't have the things that we don't see on there so for example on the left hand side of your assets can you tell me is it filled with assets do you have their buy to lets do you have stock market investments do you have life insurance do you have cash in your bank do you have if you do I'd love to know, um, in fact, I'd love to know if you could put a number, not the amount, the number, how many assets did you list down? So did you list three assets, four assets, zero assets? Just write down in those in the chat group, just say, this is how many assets I listed down. It'd be interesting, because I think it's very good for our community to kind of see what the variation is. So Fola has said, uh, I can't tell if Fola is a man or woman, if you've got, you've got five assets listed. Uh, someone, Esther said two assets, and Olua Damilala said four assets, okay? Uh, Fola, good to hear from you, it's a woman, good to, good to hear, and good to see, by the way, that we have women 
engaging and of course talking about money in this way okay so uh, odera said two assets okay now i'd love you to just shout out quickly what what assets on there what are the top two assets you've got top two so what are they so what are the top two assets that you've got on there if you love just mentioning that yeah uh and then on the right hand side so if you just mention what your top two assets are, it could be your home, maybe it could be an investment property. I'd just like to know. Okay, someone's got equities, properties and shares. Bookie's got properties and shares. Very good. Uh, stocks and shares. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Land. Good to see that, Timmy. Very good to see that. Be interesting to know, Timmy, actually, is your land in the UK or is it somewhere else, like in Nigeria or somewhere else in Africa or maybe somewhere else around the world? It'd be good to know where your, where your land is. Okay, it's in Nigeria. Okay, thanks for letting us know that. So this is a very interesting exercise. The reason this is important is because this will start to help us have a very interesting conversation with our partners. Because for a lot of us, this will be the first time we've actually assessed what our financial position is, i.e. where are we today? Because if you don't know where we are today, then you can't possibly even start to map out where we could possibly end up in five years time or in 10 years time. You can't create essentially a game plan. Okay, so that number there, what I hope that number will help you to start to do is have conversation with your partner. Make yourselves a cup of tea, maybe along during the week or maybe at the weekend and start to ask yourself, how else would we like this net worth to change in the next 12 months? How else would you like this net worth to change in the next five years? Okay, it's a very important conversation. Now, I'd love everybody who's answered to just tell us, um, what liabilities do you have showing on the right-hand side of your net worth calculation? Just, just give us a shout out. What, what sort of things actually um, uh, do you have on there? Just give us examples. Like, what's your, what's your, what are your two biggest liabilities? So I expect for a lot of you will be a mortgage uh, and credit card. Okay, just let us know what those are. Okay, now I'd love to know actually, and this is very interesting. This is very interesting. Uh, how many of you? It's good to see. Timmy says mortgage. Fola says mortgage. Uh, Lola says credit card debt. Very interesting. Now Esther says student loan debt and credit card. Okay, now I'd love to know how many of you in this room know uh, how many years you have left on your mortgage right now. So how many of you know? And if you know, I'd just love to know. Just shout out what those years are. Yeah, just put it out there. Just say, I've got X number of years left. Just put it out there. So Falaka says 24 years. Timmy says 15 years. Yep. So just shout out. Aaron says 15 years. Fola says 11 years. Brilliant. That's brilliant. Okay. Uh, who else? So Fola, I'd love to know from you, Fola. How long have you had your mortgage for? Do you roughly know how many years you've had it for to have it at 11 years right now? If you just let me know what that number is. Bolanle says uh, tw 22 years. And Fola's had hers for 15 years, right? So guys, right, this is really, really interesting because you see for the first time in a Christian environment, we're actually sharing something that's absolutely critical because I, I believe a big role that we have in the church is to educate our people and to help our people really, really take that next step, okay? Um, so, um, so given this information, I want to just introduce something to you guys. I want to just talk to you guys about something which is really fascinating, right? So we paid off our mortgage in seven years. Now, for a lot of you who might, who might have seen this, we've created a bunch of content on YouTube. Uh, you might be thinking like, but how on earth was that possible? Now, the reason it was possible, the reason we even were able to even have that possibility, and we're in our mid-30s now, is that we started one day asking the question I'm asking you guys now, which is like, how many years have we got on this mortgage thing? And like, if we were able to get rid of that debt, because now remember you're seeing your net worth on one sheet of paper, you're seeing the liabilities on the right and the assets on the, on the left hand side. If you're able to do that, like what impact would that have on our financial net worth? What game plan would we need to be able to change for like it's 24 years to 14 years. What would be the game plan? And I can guarantee you guys, yeah, that the game plan is actually very simple. Yeah, I'll give you an example. So I know for certain that if, if let's pick that Falaka's debt was about 250,000 pounds and she found a way to start to make 
you know, making this up, an extra thousand pounds a month that she committed solely towards mortgage overpayments on that particular debt. I know that given the interest rates being as low as they are right now, and you know, a lot of the indicators is that interest rates in the next three years will not be going anywhere near up, they will stay low or go negative. I know that if Falaka made it her game plan to drop 10 years on her mortgage tomorrow, she could do it by simply overpaying by a thousand pounds. Now you probably go, oh, Ken, a thousand pounds is a lot of money. Where does that money come from? Ah, ah. Now this is where the real conversation begins because this is where you start to then analyze your current lifestyle. What exactly is going on in your life right now? Where is all your money going every single month? This is where we start to talk about what we refer to as the financial performance. So, so far we've worked out our financial position. What we've worked out is where we are right now. Now we wanna become critics of ourselves. We wanna start asking ourselves, hmm, I wonder where all my money goes every single month. By that I mean, where has every single pound gone? Yeah? So that's you first of all auditing your life and figuring out where things are. So my wife and I, we do this on the first day of each month. So first of June just gone, we call it our money day. On that day, we make a cup of tea, we sit down and we look back at the last 30 days. And what we're doing there really is almost looking back on our lives and looking at how our lifestyle changed or not to match our expectations. So, yeah. So what happened in that last 30 days and where did all our sweating and tears and all the hard work go to? Where did the money go to? Yeah, because what you're trying to figure out here is you're trying to work out what you are prioritizing in your life. Yeah, so are you prioritizing investing? Are you prioritizing a fancy BMW? Are you prioritizing a fancy Mercedes? Are you prioritizing private school education? Are you prioritizing mortgage overpayments? What, are you prioritizing, you know, convenience? Like what does the last 30 days say about your life? Okay, that's very important. Yeah, that money day is so important because you see all these people in this room, Idris Bello, Jessica D, Annabelle Aaron, Cynthia, Tunde Ade, all these people in this room, we're all very busy individuals. We're all chasing different things as we want to improve our lives. But the one thing that doesn't happen as often as we would like is that we don't stop for a second, switch these things off, these very shiny things, switch them off, make a cup of tea, grab some biscuits, sit down and just say to ourselves, what has happened in the last 30 days. That conversation is critical for your wealth creation over time. Because if you can have that conversation, you will start to spot patterns. You start to go, hmm, okay. So last month, we paid for things we did not plan for. Or last month, we spent above our means. We spent more than we made. And so if you spot that pattern, you then think to yourself, hmm, so if we spend more, more than we made, it means that we had to have relied on somebody else's money, right? Logically, because somebody else's money comes into our lives in the form of credit card debt, overdrafts, and things like that, okay? So what this does is this almost illuminates our past and gives us a clue for what we should be doing in the future, okay? Because what we're really doing here is managing our lifestyles okay because that then helps us start to figure out as i said earlier i believe it was to fully care where do i find that thousand pounds from because i know that that thousand pounds extra per month has the power the power to give her back 10 more years of her life back 10 more years of her life back those are 10 years that she she might not have to shuttle into the city of london sitting in those crowded, tra crowded trains, 
There's a 10 years that she might want to take it easy and reinvest more time into her children's lives if she's got children. Same applies to everybody in this room. These were what me and my wife Mary kept saying to ourselves. How do we change the game? This is how you change the game. And remember, I want to remind everybody that in 1998, as I mentioned earlier, uh, yeah, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm dead serious, Bolanli. Are you serious that a thousand pound extra can do this? Yes. I can share, I can show you mathematically. I can even share the video we made on this. You can go and watch it on YouTube. I can put a link in there before. What I'm trying to tell you here is, is the concept I'm trying to introduce to everybody in this room is the concept of life design. Life design. I know we're all people of faith in this room, but what I'm trying to tell you is that if you want a particular type of life, that particular type of life is created if you design it. Yeah? So I'm going to use a very good example. April, 14th of April, 2020, so about a month and a half ago, I quit my six-figure job as a chief financial officer in the city of London. I was able to do that, able to do that because we had been designing the life that we're now living today since 2009. Part of that game plan was for us specifically to work towards financial independence, which is a step on the money journey. That step on the money journey, to explain what financial independence is so that everybody understands what I'm talking about, Oh, Tony says, oh, you finally did it. Yes, yes, I did. I did. <laughs> I did. You should, everybody here should please go and sign up to the Humble Pennies YouTube channel. If you're not already signed up, come on. You know, this is, this is like, you need, to, you need to get on there ASAP because we drop so much value there. Okay. Anyway, the point here is, is the only reason we're able to do that is because we became financially independent. Now, what does financial independence mean? This is something that everybody I believe personally to seek to optimize their lives for in one way or, or another, because it really empowers you in such a powerful way to be able to not only make free yourself up from the shackles of debt and from the shackles of the 95, but it actually gives you the opportunity to serve your community, to give back and to live the life you really want. So the state of financial independence, which is a stage on the money journey I talked about earlier, which I'll go into in a second, is a stage where, get this, listen to this, it's really important, where the assets you had on that net worth calculator that you worked out, remember that, that net worth we worked out earlier, the assets on there are making enough income per month such that that income from the assets covers your monthly living expenses, Right? So let's say your monthly living expenses, let's say Aya or but let's say Bolan Lay's living expenses each month is two and a half grand a month. Just making this up. But Bolan Lay happens to have making it up a diverse group of assets in her life, which might include maybe two buy to let assets, maybe a, a, a blog that makes her money online, maybe a membership site that generates her recurring monthly income. Or maybe she has investments in a stock market that generate her a decent amount of dividend every month. Maybe that investment, that, that portfolio generates her maybe 800 pounds a month. But when she adds up all the income from her assets, yeah, the income from those assets far exceed her monthly expenses. If she's able to do that, which is very possible by the way, right? Because she's able to do that, do you know what that means? That means, if the pandemic happened or if anything happened, she would be able to say, well, actually, life's actually okay because my monthly expenses is two and a half grand and my investment income, my income from my assets is three and a half grand. So I'm able to cover very easily all my expenses and I'm able to still put money away and live life the way I want. What it does is that it gives you your time back and you potentially become what's known as location independent. Okay, so what is the money journey? Let me explain what they are. There are six stages on the money journey. Sorry, guys, I know this is taking a bit of time, but it's very important that I give you that bit of background for a lot of what we're going to talk about now to sink in. Right, you guys can tell me if I haven't got any more, any more time. Ayo, you can tell me because I know I've only got 30 minutes. So I'm going to try and lay this out very quickly. So what is the money journey? The money journey looks like this. 
let's say you're born and you're growing up and you're going through your teenage years and you become 21 years old or, or whatever, okay? You are living with your parents and you want to move out of your parents' home. You, when you're living with your parents, you're at the stage of the money journey that we refer to as financial dependency. So you are relying solely on your parents or your guardians or whoever for your life, your livelihood. Yeah. Now you become 21 or you've maybe started growing up and becoming an adult. Let's say you're 25 years old and you say to yourself, ah, oh, I want to leave now and go and find my own way. I want to go and start my own life and have myself a husband or a wife or a boyfriend or whatever. So you, you march off. You say you wave to your parents and say, bye bye. See you. And you take off and you welcome into the real world of work. And that real world of work is one where in this country, you are exposed to death. Now what happens? You suddenly find yourself embracing the plastics of this world, the credit cards, the overdrafts, the really interesting things that mean that you are living the Western life. And the minute you do that, you jump into uh, what we refer to as the, uh, the, the, essentially the paycheck to paycheck lifestyle, which is where you essentially make money each month um, and you are using that money you make each month to pay down some debt and pay your expenses. You're almost in a cycle. That second stage, which I has written there, the real name for it is um, the stage of financial solvency. Solvency, okay? Because all you're doing is living day to day, working and earning and paying debt and expenses. Now, here's what's interesting about that. Notice we're only two stages into the money journey, but here's what's really interesting about that is that over 80% of the adults in the UK and in the Western world, if you check Canada and the US, right, this is really interesting, remain for the rest of their adult lives at the stage of financial solvency. Most people remain there which is very interesting actually when you think about it, because what it really tells you is that most people have not left infancy. Infancy is what you were doing at financial dependency when you were relying on your mom and your dad and that was life, right? So you've now gone one step and then most people remain there, right? And that's it, their adult lives. In fact, most people stay there and all they do is service their mortgages, pay for their flashy cars on the driveway, pay for all these things, but in their real lives, when you dig deep and you scratch the surf surface and you get past the, you know, the, 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 the Instagram levels and you get deep down, what's really going on there is that they're living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. What that means is that if anything happened, yeah, if anything happened, like a pandemic or something really crazy happens and they lose their jobs, or like, you know, they have a flat tire, yeah? Or maybe a boiler breaks down, yeah? It means that you've basically rocked their lives because they don't have the, the buffer to sustain that level of um, essentially um, shock in their lives, yeah? So this is most people. This is the story of this country. Now, everybody in this room are in this room because you're in the right environment. And so you guys are the people who we're expecting to break away. You're the breakaway crowd to break away from this stage of financial solvency. You are meant to break away from the stage of the paycheck to paycheck lifestyle. Now, what's the next stage after that? Okay. The next stage after that is a stage of financial stability. Now, what does that mean? Stage of financial stability means that you have broken away from the majority of people in this country and you've managed to put away three months to six months of expenses saved. Three months to six months saved away. So let's say, let's pick um, um, Ayo. Let's say Ayo's expenses are three grand, but Ayo has managed to put away three times three, nine grand to 18 grand of savings put away. Yeah. These are expenses that if anything happened, I can go, oh, thank God. Right. I've got that level of financial stability. Yeah. Right. Now, after this stage of financial, this stage three, three to six months, 
there is a next level. This is now where you are like, you're breaking away from the mold. Like you're, you're, this is a rare, whoever breaks away from this and, and gets to this next step is even more rare than most people. This is the stage of financial debt freedom. Debt freedom. So this is stage four, and you are the person who has managed to get rid of the debts in their lives, that credit card debt, that student loan, that payday loan, yeah? And you might even, although this is not necessary at this stage, you might even be mortgage free, although it's not necessary at this stage, but you've gotten rid of all your expensive debt, yeah? Is everybody following? If you're following, please hit the yes, so that I know, say I'm following, hit yes, 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 so I know everybody's following, right? Okay, good, I'm seeing the yeses, right? So you are following, right, good. So now this is my, this is everybody, I know this is Aaron's mission, this is Ayos, everybody who's here in this room should be heading on this, this pathway of the money journey because this is how you would change the game for your family, right? Now, we're gonna get to what it will cost you to do that in a minute, right? So. After the stage of financial debt freedom, you then get to almost, I call it the, the Ferrari stage, not literally, because you're not buying a Ferrari, but you're kind of on the highway, which I call the stage of financial security. Financial security. This stage is so important. It's a stage where you've got between one year and three years of expenses put away. One to three years. Get, do you know what this does for your life? What this means is, is that, you know, Kole or Joy or Aaron or anybody in this room who's watching or Mobolaji can say, do you know what? I'm going to take a mini sabbatical. I'm going to take three months off. I'm going to, I'm going to head off and go somewhere for three months and my world will not end. Why? Because you've got financial security. You've got one year to three years of expenses. Can anyone in this room at the minute do that? If you can, then you're a very rare individual. You've got one to three years of your expenses saved. That means you can like switch off everything and just say, right, kids, wifey or husband, we're going to take three months off. We're going to go and live in St. Lucia for three months. And because you're able to do that, life will not be over. Because why? You've got three years worth of expenses saved between one and three years, you are so secure financially that like pff, anything happens, you're like, yeah, it's okay. It's okay, right? Now, this is very important, this subject, right? Right, right, so this is interesting because now you're like financial security now, but there's a, there's a step way beyond that, right? Because the step after financial security is the step of financial independence financial independence. This is where, get this, as I mentioned earlier, where there are two definitions and it's so important. One is that the income from your assets, remember you have to be so unique in your um, approach to money that you have enough income to exceed your expenses. That's the first definition. Because if you're able to do that, then you have more than the person who's financially secure, right? Because think about it, if all the income from your assets are coming in and the, it's almost evergreen, that income comes in every month from your assets, then there is potentially no end to your income. And over time, that income increases and not decrease. Yeah, so that's the first definition. The second definition, making it almost comparing apples and apples, is where you have 25 years worth of expenses. You're going to go to me see, what? Ken, is that even possible that anybody can be at this position? Of course, of course it's possible. Many people, I've met many people in that position. And we're in that position today ourselves. Why am I even telling you this? I want you guys to remember, I keep going back to the first position at the beginning, yeah? Well, I said to you, we moved to this country in 1998. So a lot of you guys would go, whoa, hold on. So what you're telling me is that you can become financially independent in one generation. Yes. Yes. Now, what's interesting, one, one input into the equation that we're talking about here is your expenses. Remember the word I keep saying expenses? Because for a lot of you, 
your expenses might be five thousand pounds a month. In fact, let's do this exercise, right? Because this is really important, right? I want to ask you guys. I want to ask you guys. How many? I'm going to ask you a question. Yeah, this is before we do the exercise. Can the people in the comments just tell me how much money is enough for you? I want you to just answer that question. So imagine that if this money was in your bank account, yeah, um, you would, just in total, so Bookie says monthly, total, let's say you've got this money in your bank now, you would say to yourself, Bookie, you say to yourself, I've made it. I've made it. If you saw this money in your bank account, you go, I've made it. Yeah. I want you to write to me in the, in the, in the chat. How much money is that? Okay. Good. So Lola Thompson said 50 million pounds. Good. Good to see that. Who else? Aaron says 1 billion. So Aaron, is that in pounds or dollars or Naira? What, what is it in? Bookie says 20 million pounds. Yep. Uh, Shoy says 10 million. Very interesting. Eva or Eva, Eva says 10 billion pounds. Wow. I am astonished. Wow. These are, these are really like eye-watering numbers. <coughs> so this is really exciting, right? Because this exercise is going to shock you, right? I'm going to tell you in a minute, right? So Folaka says 500 million pounds, right? So this is like, I'm just laughing. I'm just falling off my seat here in these numbers because they're so, they're so interesting. Now, here's what I'm going to tell you something. Right? Here's what I'm going to tell you, right? You see, notice, have you noticed a trend in all those numbers? Has anybody noticed? Can anybody tell me what the trend is? Tell me if anybody's noticed the, the trend. Can you tell me what the trend is that you've noticed in the numbers? Millions. Thank you. Fola says millions. Tully says millions. Fola says, absolutely. Now, re are you ready for this? Do you know where the millions come from? They come from Instagram. They come from the, the media. They come from the messaging into our minds. You are made to believe, get me, that you must have millions for you to liberate yourselves from the shackles and the day-to-day nine-to-fives and the running around and like catching that frustrating train you catch and working till whenever and hardly ever seeing your kids, hardly ever going over with your wife or your husband, hardly ever doing the things you want to do. You are made to believe that you need the billions and the multiple millions. Yeah? Right. Let's, let's, okay, let's play, let's play around now for a second. Let's do something interesting. I want you guys to take your current monthly expenses. So pick your number, whatever it is on average that you spend each month. Okay. So sorry, I'm, I'm exceeding my time. Uh, I think this is really, really critical. Okay. Right. Are you ready for this? Um, so, um, by the way, that I in that list you wrote, stage C is financial independence. Independence, I-N, okay? So everybody's clear, okay? Right, okay, financial independence, okay? Now, this is really important, right? We're gonna do this exercise now, but before I do that, I wanna tell you guys the remaining stages. So when you guys hear of financial freedom, fi when you hear those words, financial freedom, yeah? It's the next step after, after financial independence. So financial independence is where all your monthly essential expenses, your mortgage or your home, your light, your electricity, your gas, your cancel tax, all those things are covered. But financial freedom is where your lifestyle expenses are covered by the income from your assets. So for example, let's say that I would love uh, uh, an apartment in Mallorca in Spain. Let's say he would love like, I don't know, making this up, a place in, I don't know, making this up, making this up. Like where, where would you love, what cities would you guys love to live in as a, as a, as a, as a, as a home, as a second home, if you, if you were to have one? What cities? I don't know. Where? Just put, put them in the comments. Let's, let's say Atlanta. Totally says Atlanta. Let's say that you wanted the option to go to Monaco or to Dubai or to wherever and... Let's say, I'm going to pick uh, Olua Sheon, who said he wants a place, he wants to have the option of having a home or even a place to stay. You don't have to own the home. It just has to be a place that you can have access to. Yeah. Let's say that place 
costs you, making this up, Oluwashion, let's say it costs you 5,000 pounds per, I don't know, making this up. Let's call it 10 grand a year. Yeah. And we'll divide 10 grand a year into, let's call it five, let's call it 12 grand a year. That's what it costs you to have access to that place. That's a grand a month. Let's add that grant to your regular monthly expenses. Yeah. Let's say your regular monthly, monthly expenses are three grand a month. And that one grand that you need to live that lifestyle is, is added. That's four grand a month. And all your income from your assets exceed four grand a month. Then you are financially free because your lifestyle expenses are covered by your assets. Are you following? You guys following? Yeah. So we've got really amazing places. Bahamas, Mauritius, Nice, um, uh, Biarritz in France. Never heard of that place, actually. Monaco, Dubai, amazing places. Lagos, amazing places. And these are amazing places that you can actually choose to live in if you design your life in a particular way. Now, back to my question I asked you guys earlier. I said, how much is enough? This is one of the, the most exciting questions I ask people. And the numbers always, always really excite me. But the numbers are wrong. Let me tell you why. Yeah? So... Let's do an exercise. Hope you guys have your sheets of paper. Get your calculators out if you can on your phone. Yeah, and let's do this now. What is your average monthly expenses? What are you spending right now? In fact, let, okay, let's start with what you're spending right now. What's the number? Don't tell us yet, just pick that number. Multiply that number by 12, yeah? Then multiply that number by 25. I'll tell you why I'm doing that in a second. So let's say your number is two grand a month, making this up. If you multiply by 12, it's 24K a year. If you multiply by 25, it's 600,000 pounds. Yeah, so quite straightforward maths. So can you guys drop it in the comments and just tell us what your number came out when you took your monthly expense, multiplied by 12, multiplied by 25. Just put it in the comments. What came up? What came up? So Lola says 750,000. Good. Esther said 450,000. Good, good. Okay. So let's see. What are your numbers? What are your numbers? So Bolanle says 12.6 million rand. So Bolanle, I presume you're in South Africa. So rand, I think the exchange to the rand is about 25 rand to a pound, I think. So if you could give us a pound conversion, Bolanle, that'd be great. Just divide that, I think, by the exchange rate. Let's get the number. Uh, yep, Johannesburg. Okay, good. Uh, Bookie says 3 million pounds. Interesting. Very good. Or Lua Shane, okay, 1.5, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. okay. Interesting, interesting, very interesting. Now, I want to tell you something interesting. So I want you now to write for me two numbers on the screen. What was the number you just worked out? And when I said to you, how much money is enough for you? How much did you work out? If you just write the two numbers down and just, paste, and just post them as a comment. Just write my current number and the number I thought would be like my magical number. All right, just write it down. I kind of want to just see what you've got, right? So show says 10 million versus 600K. Now that's very interesting, isn't it? Bookie says 3 million versus 20 million. Very interesting. Esther says 450K versus 50 million. Whoa, that is, that is crazy. Uh, Folake says 1.5 versus 500 million. Whoa. Are you guys, okay, are you, I'm gonna let you guys tell me, right? What do you think is going on here? What do you think is going on? What's, what's going on here? Why, why have we got different numbers? Like, what, why, why, why have we got, like, vastly different numbers? What, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on here? What, what's going on? Why are, we, why, why are these numbers, like, kind of like Instagram numbers? Instagram, you know, celebrity numbers. These are, like celebrity numbers that you had what's going on what's going on yeah what's going on here yeah we don't know what numbers we need to be working to <laughs> spot on esther <laughs> sorry i'm laughing because like your answer is so correct right because because we don't know like what's going on right we don't know what's going on so this basically reveals holes in our thinking between reality and expectation. And it also tells us that a lot of us don't actually know what the cost of our freedom is. Like we don't actually know like what number, like, cause if you don't know what the number is, like how on earth would you know when you've got there? 
like are you understanding me like how will you know when you've like got there how will you know how will you know you go how will you know you go oh i've got there now i've actually got there now yeah and if the number's so far away how do you even start to have faith that's possible Yeah, is everybody following? If you're following, let me know in those comments, in the chat, right? How do you know it's even possible? And because you don't know it's even possible, this is where it gets interesting, how do you even set goals to be able to hit that number? Yeah? So a lot of what I'm sharing with you now sounds really simple, but it's so important. Because remember those stages of the money journey? Remember those stages of the money journey, yeah, that we talked about? Most people remember the 80% of people in this country, yeah, uh, on that stage of the paycheck to paycheck living, financial solvency. But because they are all just tearing themselves apart and running around and paying debt and paying bills and paying whatever they're paying, yeah they this is really interesting they do not have the time to answer these questions i'm asking you they don't even have the time to sit down and rest or maybe have some exercise or you know read a book to their children let alone even sit down and go hmm like this life we're living like it felt like i was 30 only yesterday but now i'm 40 what's going on what's going on time is running away but most of us remain in the same place in fact a lot of us are worse off than we were and we don't even know it do you know why we don't know it i'm going to tell you why we don't know it we don't know it because a lot of us don't understand how inflation works. Inflation. Inflation is the silent assassin that eats away at the purchasing power of your money every single day. But if most of us are not investing in assets that generate us a return above inflation, above inflation, then we are being assassinated every day by inflation. We think we've got money in the bank, but we don't know that the money in the bank is worth a lot less because the purchasing power of that money is a lot less. Yeah? Are we following? Let me look at the chats. Come in. Tell me in the comments, if you guys are following, if this is making sense, I want to be, I want to know that what I'm sharing here is making sense to some people. And like some, some, some things are setting off in your mind. Some things are setting off in your mind. Yeah. This is why I told you, I didn't want to plan this session. I just wanted it to be as real as possible. I wanted to just like sink in for you guys to go, whoa. Okay. Okay. What do we need to start doing? And I tell you who the worst people are really is we are people of faith. A lot of people who are people of faith simply go, oh, I'm praying about it. That's it. I'm praying about it. But, you know, I can read you many verses in the Bible where, you know, you do have to take your step forward first before any form of faith gets activated. You've got to do some things first like what we're talking about right now, like working out your net worth and beginning to ask yourself, like, what does it even mean? Okay, so Bolanle says, so do you mean when we do this equals financial freedom? Yeah, good question. <laughs> Let's talk about it. So you remember that maths I got you to work out? Current level of expense multiplied by 12 multiplied by 25. Why have I even asked you to do that? So when I said multiply by 12, it's just for you to work out what your annual current expenses are. Then I said, when I multiply by 25, this is what it means. Here's what it means, okay? So there's something called the safe withdrawal rate. 
So let's say, give me, I'm going to pick one of the numbers. Sorry, hold on. Let me just, one of the numbers. Give me a second. Let me find somebody who had, I'm just, so I'm just scrolling through to find a number because there've been many comments. One second. So Fola, brilliant. Fola said 600K. That's his number. Let me explain what that number means. So Fola, if you had 600K in the bank right now, this is where, this is where it gets really exciting, right? If you had 600K in the bank right now and you withdrew 4%, every year. 4% is the same as 1 divided by 25. Or 4% is the same as 25 years worth of money. Yeah? If you withdraw 4% every year, you will have 25 years of worth of money. Does anybody agree with me? Yeah? Now, why does that matter? It matters because if Ayo or Fola or whoever managed to invest that money, and generated a return of more than 4%, yeah, it would mean that they would never, ever run out of money. Let me explain what I mean. So you got 600K. Every year you take 4% off. Yeah? So you take 25K off, 24K off, yeah? Which is 4% of 600K. Now, get this. If you were generating a return on that money of more than 4%, let's say you're making a return of 7%, everybody following, then every year you took 4% out, it would mean that every year you have extra 3% that has grown on your portfolio. So even if you took your 4% out, which is your yearly expense of, in your case, 24K, it would mean that you would theoretically and practically never run out of money. No, no, no. So 4% is your assumed withdrawal rate. Yeah. But the, the return on your, on your investment is assumed to be above inflation. Let's say you're 7% above inflation. So let's say inflation is 2% and you generated, um, uh, let's say you generated 7% or let's call it 8%. Out of that 8%, 2% is inflation. So 6%, Rough math is real, real return. But out of that 6%, you take 4% out. It means that every year your portfolio is growing by an additional 2%, which is that 6% less your 4% withdrawal. And that additional 2% every year is compounding, compounding and growing. What that means is that every year, provided your money is in the right environment, yeah, that, that's a different conversation. We'll talk about it. Different conversation. But when your money is in the right environment, not in your current account, not in your savings account, getting you 0.1% base rate. Yeah? Provided your money is in the right environment, your goal is to generate an average return over time. Because remember, the real assets that everybody in this room has is time. So you might think your house is the real asset. It's not. The real asset is the time that your money has to work. So that means that your kids, if you've got kids, have got an asset that you haven't even recognized. They've got the asset of time, which means that your children could actually become millionaires by the age of 40 or in their late 40s if you understand the power of time and compounding. Now, Pam has said, what, assets, what environment is right then? The right environment is for you to invest your money in assets that expose you to enough risk, but calculated risk to generate that return. What are those environments? Number one is for you to invest your money in a globally diversified, what we call index funds and ETFs. An ETF stands for an exchange traded fund. Now, it'll be very, a, a bit of a long-winded way for me to explain this to you, but a very simple way to get an explanation is for you to watch the exact videos on my YouTube channel, because I've done extensive videos about these. Now, why does this matter? Here's what's interesting. Uh, who asked the question? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to see. Hold on, hold on. Who asked the question? Was it Pam? Was it Pam? I'm trying to see. Oh, yeah, Pam. Pam, get this. You see these things we've got here, these phones? 
For me, this phone is a money-making device because I can sit down here in my study at home and from here, I can own companies in America, companies on the US equities market, companies that everybody's running to during the current pandemic, companies that are performing well, like your Amazons, your Teslas. I can own them without having what's called specific risk to that company. The way I own them is through an innovation called the index fund or the exchange traded fund. I own them because I can sit here with this device and I can take 100 pounds a month, 200 pounds a month, 500 pounds a month, and I can own a piece of every single one of the 500 largest companies in the US equities market, straight from here in Kent. Yeah, and I can sit here and own them very cheaply. Ah, but this all has to do with knowing how to do that. So you have to basically figure out, and you can, I can, I wish my wife was on this live because she'll be dropping the links for you guys. But go on, go on, uh, go on, uh, go on our, what apps? Apps are Vanguard. Vanguard. Hargreaves Lansdowne. These are two that we use. The vehicle you need for it within those apps or accounts are a tax efficient environment one known as a stocks and shares ISA, and one known as a self-invested pension plan, a SIP, S-I-P-P. -P. Okay? Now, I know we're covering a lot very quickly, but I just want you guys, what I'm trying to help you guys realize is that in your lifetime, essentially, if you said to yourself today, like a like a like Oh, excuse me, like a lifetime, you mentioned a lifetime ISA. Yes, you can use that. But lifetime ISA is, um, is somewhat limiting because you're really either using that to buy a property or you're using that to invest in your pension. And there's a cap. But you should get a stocks and shares ISA because your, your yearly allowance for that is £20,000 a year. And every return you get in that account is tax-free. Yeah? So get that. Yeah? So there's so much I can cover here. But um, what I'm trying to really get into everybody's minds is that this money game can be understood. Yeah, because a lot of us are playing uh, off, you're kind of um, defensive. Yeah, but what I'm trying to get you to understand is that you need to be offensive. Like you need to be on the attack. Because if you're not on the attack, then you're going to be like everybody else who is on stage two, which is, the stage of financial solvency. But a lot of them don't even know that they are there. In fact, a lot of them don't even know that there is a concept of a money journey and that your desire, your goal is to progress from one stage to other stages of the money journey. Okay, there's so much I can talk about here. And this is like, um, such a, an ongoing conversation, but immediate resources that I can offer you immediately are head over to our YouTube channel where you can, if you love videos, you can watch videos. So the, the YouTube channel is at The Humble Penny. Okay. Head over to our blog, which is an award winning blog. We get about 40,000 people per month visit that blog to consume our content. It's at thehumblepenny.com. Okay. Head over there. The final thing I want to mention is, I mentioned that we launched something in February this year where our commitment, like this is so exciting, is Mary and I have committed that we're going to help in the next 10 years, 10,000 people become financially independent. And we're doing that through a platform called Financial Joy Academy at financialjoyacademy.com. You can check that out as well. Okay, those are the three platforms where we live and where we um, where we share things. So the first two are free platforms. The third one, Financial Joy Academy, is a paid platform. It's, a, it's what we call a membership program, essentially. But it's the first ever in the UK of its kind because there's nobody else doing what I'm doing, let alone a black man, let alone an African. There's just nobody else doing it. 
right? So I want to, me and my wife are showing up because we are so passionate about this topic. Because I know that if you get the mindset and take action, and if your kids get it, oh my God, just think about what that would mean for the church, what that would mean for the communities around us, what that would mean for your kids and like your relatives. Yeah. One thing I want to mention is I talked about expenses earlier. Everybody in this room needs to almost self-evaluate their lives because a big way that you reduce and make this journey even possible is for you to take your expenses hostage. You need to take your expenses hostage because if you don't, you are essentially living and chasing the Joneses every month. Yeah, and this is not easy to do, but you must do this for this, what I'm talking about to become a reality. Because think about it. If your current expenses are five grand a month, do you know that if your expenses were reduced by maybe about a month, uh, a, a, grand and a, a, grand, a grand and a half per month, yeah, it could mean that you no longer have to work for another 10 years. It could reduce your retirement age from 65 to the age of 55. Did you know that? Or even let's call it your optional retirement age. The age where you can say to your employer, do you know what? Like, I'm kind of tired of like living this wretched life where I'm constantly commuting and constantly chasing, chasing like someone else's dreams. I kind of want to break away and go and do that thing I've always wanted to do. Like Financial Joy Academy, The Humble Pen, these are our dreams. Like, and we're literally living those dreams today. I could have stayed in the city of London and working and getting a six-figure salary. And as nice as that is, it's not my dream. I'm building somebody else's empire. Yeah? You guys in this room, every single person here has dreams. But for most people, those dreams are so dormant they're so like shuffled and tucked away that those dreams never come up in your day-to-day -day lives. The reason they don't come up is because you're not yet asking yourself the right questions, which are, how can I make those dreams come true? Like, how can I use the money I'm making today and over the next three to five years to potentially break away, plot my escape and create that dream life I want? How can I do that? A lot of it has to do with simplifying your lifestyle. And I'm going to challenge everybody in this room. Yeah, I'm going to challenge everybody and say to you, what cars are you guys driving today? And I'll just challenge you. How much were those cars? How much are you paying for those cars each month? And what is, this is the key bet, What's the opportunity cost of that car? I.e., what level of life freedom, and get, here's the bit, what level of your life's energy are you giving up for that car that's parked out there so that you can maybe prove to your fellow church, church folk that you are doing well? Or to prove to your family members that we are doing well? Yeah, I'm just putting that out there. Yeah, but I've spent too much time now. I've completely blown Ayo's uh, budget for time and Aaron's budget for time. Apologies, everybody. But hopefully today has been useful in some way. And hopefully you've taken one thing away that will help you guys kind of start to think about this money thing from a place of joy. Okay, I want you to think of it from a place of joy because money can really change your lives in a really positive way and the lives of the people around you as well, okay? So anyway, I'm going to leave it there and feel free to connect with me. My email is ken at thehumblepenny.com. If you to drop me an email, drop me an email. Uh, um, and yeah, you know, I'll come back to you guys. But thank you guys again for having me on this platform. Really appreciate you hanging around. I've spent far too long on the call. So I'll stop there for now and to be continued, hopefully, sometime.